long gone that obstructed the, the sight line of the intersection, which it's now clear. So uh, I, I don't see any problem with it. I actually had a concern of my own about that sight line triangle. Yeah, I, if we could at least have a staff or maybe verify just to make sure that there's no issues with that. Uh, other than that, I have no issues with it. It's, and it's really for the protection of the person who lives directly east. Or, or anyone that might be walking along that. Or, the, or, or yeah, yeah, pedestrian. Yeah, pedestrian too. traffic. Uh, because, I mean, looking at the property personally, if, this, if the fence was moved back five feet more and had a five-foot setback versus a zero setback, it wouldn't impact any usage of the pool whatsoever. Well, actually, in many cases, what, what most villages do on a corner like that, they have a vision triangle, so they just kind of put an angle there so that at least you have some visibility. Right. Uh, so I think that's something that staff could possibly address if need be. You okay with that, John? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, then. May we have a roll call? Ordinance yes. Number Trustee Miller. Ordinance number 18. That's yes. ordinance number 18, yes. <laughs> Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Anderson. <laughs> Aye. Trustee Siddig. Aye. Trustee Wells. Aye. Trustee Gust. Aye. And Trustee Jensen. We make it unanimous. Aye. Okay. And motion carries. Thank okay. you. Uh, next, we have uh, a petitioner uh, 19, yes. for the uh, George Shepard uh, property for a conditional use. They're looking for a conditional use permit for automobile sales, supplies, and services. Uh, and this is at uh, 37937 North Sheridan Road. Uh, Mr. Casme is the, I don't know if he's, he's present here. Uh, it's currently operating. He's actually been working with zoning. Uh, the property was actually had some, some uh, a number of issues. Um, and uh, possibly we will engage staff to maybe elaborate on a little bit. Uh, he is working to clean those issues up. Uh, if you take a look at the, uh, uh, the sheet that was handed out to you, there's a, a number of uh, timetables that uh, Mr. Casme would have to meet in order to uh, fulfill the Conditional use permit, uh, if he didn't meet those obligations, again, that uh, conditional use permit could be uh, avoided uh, at, uh, at that time. And again, I will engage John if I could so do, uh, we could elaborate a little bit more on the, uh, the history of that property. Thank you, Trustee. Yes, Mr. Mr. Cosme has been located at 37937 uh, Sheridan Road for a number of years. Uh, previously has been renting it from George Shepard of, of Shepard Chevrolet. Um, he's been given conditional use permits twice before to run this type of business. Uh, the most previous one expired in 2011, uh, and that's really why this is back before you again. Um, also, in, in addition to that, uh, over last year during the business inspections, uh, we staff had found a number of violations uh, that existed on the back of that property, uh, everything from illegal dumping uh, uh, to uh, usage of, of the, the wetlands and, and uh, unimproved parking sp uh, spaces and so forth. Um, and so he basically has had to start over on the conditional use permit, has gone through the plan commission, uh, and the result of that is, is that there are some pretty uh, stringent requirements being placed on this particular business uh, to allow uh, the business to continue to operate. Um, there are 17 conditions that have been placed on that, uh, on that conditional use permit, everything from landscaping requirements along Sheridan Road to fencing requirements, as well as paving the, the, the gravel parking lot uh, that's going to be used, uh, uh, things of that nature. Um, and and there, about every three months, there is one of those benchmarks that will have to be met uh, if at any point uh, uh, the progress fails at the business, then the conditional use permit will automatically expire and he will no longer have the right to run that business at that location. It's also my understanding uh, from Mr. Shepard, uh, we just got notified in the past couple of days, I believe that Mr. Cosby has bought that property from Mr. Shepard, but we still have not been notified uh, from Mr. Cosby whether or not that is uh, actually the case. Is that pertinent to this board vote tonight? Who owns the property or who doesn't? Not particularly other than, than it does, uh, it, it should, should be a good indication that Mr. Cosme should be willing to spend the money that 
these uh, requirements are going to place on them. The, you know, the paving of the parking lot is a substantial cost. Uh, the village has recognized that from the beginning. Uh, the initial response from Mr. Cosby was is that he was the renter, it wasn't his obligation. But if it is now his property, that, that can no longer be an excuse. Well, would the petition have to be amended since it was uh, tenant on behalf of the owner? Was it, was it Mr. Cosby has, is, is the petitioner in this case. I, I saw that it was on behalf of the owner as the way it was written, the way it was written in, the, in the document that, I, that was handed out to us. So is that necessary, Mr. Attorney, to amend that? The, um, uh, the permit is regulatory of the use of the property, regardless of who the owner is. Okay. So these conditions and the operation of that business um, are conditioned upon the meeting of these conditions. Oh, I understand. I'm, I just wonder if there's a technical requirement to, mm -hmm. if, if it was a, were a petition by the owner via the, the tenant, if we'd have to amend that. N not at the present time. Okay. I don't, and I can't foresee it okay. because if, uh, if the whole thing was blown up, then it wouldn't be a lawful use there anyhow the way it's being used. So Understood. There's no motivation to to really challenge it. This gives a definition. Even though the ordinance title says the petition of George Shepard, that's okay. That's who the petitioner was. Originally. Yes. Okay. Does that answer your question? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Any Thank other you. questions? Um, trustee, I don't Your have comment? a question, but I have a comment there. Uh, mm -hmm. I know in um, attending the uh, public hearing for that property, Mr. Casme was uh, had some concerns about the uh, <clears throat> I guess some of the uh, conditions that uh, he had to meet there. And I just want to assure him that, uh, again, the Village of Beach Park is uh, committed to, uh, uh, to rising expectations from all of our uh, business uh, uh, areas, and particularly those that have been previously neglected. Uh, so as the opportunity presents itself, as we approach uh, business in the future, we will have rising expectations from them. Uh, again, we want to uh, move toward cleaning up some of these areas, uh, improving the tax base, and uh, Again, make it more, more appealing and more vibrant and, again, uh, create the image that, uh, that the Village of Beach Park is, is looking for. So uh, that doesn't just apply to you, but, again, as opportunity presents itself, we will be approaching other businesses as well. Uh, we we want to clean up these areas, uh, again, particularly those that are previously neglected. So uh, with that said, um, thank you. One more. In, in light of the uh, history of this property, um, I have s some slight misgivings. I'd like some reassurance from our administrator. Has, in your negotiations with this petitioner, have you um, come to the conclusion that, that they're earnest with respect to conforming to these uh, requirements? Ms. Mr. Cosme has made a lot of progress on that property since the, uh, the conditional use permit. The application started in October of, of last year, uh, and, and it's ultimately taken this long to get here, uh, in part because of the concerns that staff has raised. Um, Mr. Cosme has, is also the owner of six or seven parcels further north on Sheridan Road uh, where the A-frame building is, uh, where Sheridan auto, uh, auto sales used to be. Um, I, I think that is a good indication of, of Mr. Cosme's uh, willingness to comply with the village ordinances uh, uh, when clearly directed to do so. He has made substantial progress on that site. Everything has been completely removed from that site except for the building itself and the fence. Uh, the cars have all been removed and, and, and really that was a, another part portion that the village had encouraged him was to one, if he's going to be asking for a conditional use permit for the usage of somebody else's property, then he also needs to, to make sure that he's in compliance on the property that he owns and ultimately rents to somebody else. And so he has made progress on the property that he owns uh, as well. Good to hear. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. With that said, I need to, uh, with that said, I'd like, to, uh, like the uh, board to consider an, uh, an ordinance uh, approving the petition for Mr. George Shepard. Uh, for a condition to use permit for a auto, automobile sale, supplies, and service use at uh, 379 37 North Sheridan Road. This is ordinance number 19. I have a motion. Second. Motion from Trustee uh, Wells, second from Trustee Jensen. Roll call, please. Trustee Anderson? Aye. Trustee Siddick? Aye. Trustee Wells? Aye. Trustee Gust? Aye. Trustee Jensen? Aye. And Trustee Miller? Aye. Thank you, Your Honor, and that concludes my report. All right, thank you very much.
Uh, moving right on, we have the TIF committee. And does anybody have a report on behalf of Mayor Hucker? For the no, TIF committee? We have not had a meeting since the last board meeting, so there's nothing to report. Okay. All right. <coughs> Public Works, Trustee Otterson. Thank you, Madam <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Trustee Miller. <laughs> okay. um, the first item on there is the consideration of a purchase of a, a vehicle for the Public Works Department. Um, this was a budgeted item. Um, let's see, I see the total price came in at about 85006 but with about $10,000 worth of discounts that I'm sure Gene is able to, uh, to negotiate, <laughs> it, uh, it, it came down quite a bit. But um, we've discussed this at the Public Works Committee and uh, recommended bringing it onto the board. So I would make a motion to approve the purchase of the 2014 Ford F-550 truck for $74,953 from Coons County, Ford of Antioch. Second. A motion from Trustee Otterson, second from Trustee Gust. Any questions or discussion before we move forward? <coughs> Roll call, please. Trustee Siddick. Aye. Trustee Wells. Aye. Trustee Gust. Aye. Trustee Jensen. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. And Trustee Otterson. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Okay, the second item is, is nothing that we have to vote on. Um, it's uh, based on a concern that was brought by a, a a resident at the last meeting about special service area 12 of the uh, the water main extensions um, the request was that we alter the boundaries of the uh, of the special service area to make it a straight line at the bottom instead of uh, a curved line um, the original intent was to bring water to as many people that we could that needed it so the reason the boundary is the way it is is because those were the last people on the line that said yes they were interested that's that's the simple reason why it is the way it is um, in, in further discussion at the the committee meeting if we were to alter that by three lots it would halt the whole deal and we'd have to start over again and with the substantial amount of money that we've put into this through engineering fees and legal fees and everything we decided that we were not going to change the boundary and cancel the, the special service area um, but rather wait until the 60-day period is done and like the attorney explained at the last meeting when the 60-day period is done if the petition is not sufficient to turn it down it doesn't automatically become a special service area then it needs consideration you know before the whole board so the, the whole board will vote on it at that time so does that explain it well enough Yes, I mean, this is a committee report. The committee's uh, recommendation to the full board right. is not to change the boundaries. Right, so, so I don't. Before the full board at this point. So do we don't need a motion to vote on that? No, no. It's no. just a report. It's not a negative, it's a report. Okay. All right, well, then that concludes the Public Works report. Okay, thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is Finance Committee, Trustee Jensen. That'd be me. Uh, we had a meeting last night. Um, and one, one item that we already um, passed on was, is, is uh, the finance uh, director's report, which was in the uh, consent agenda. But I wanted to bring a couple of items to, uh, to light that are kind of buried in there, which I think uh, merit our attention. Um, there was uh, some savings that, that I think that, that our staff deserves a pat on the back for. And um, included in that, uh, there was a $15,000 amount that we'd set aside for additional um, expense for enforcement, code enforcement, which staff has, has managed to avoid spending by taking that duty on within our existing staff. Uh, also, we have seen that we're below budget, and it's partially due to staff efforts and partially due to the fact that we've not seen a lot of development, uh, by 29000 and 21000 respectively, in the Campbell and BF technical um, portions of the budget. And lastly, uh, there's a $17,000 approximate savings uh, in switching the property insurance coverage this year. So uh, I'd like to uh, commend our staff um, on, on job well done. And uh, a couple items that were on our agenda, which are going to be coming to the, to the board as a whole in the next committee, the whole meeting, uh, our administrator will be in the near future. We're promised that we'll have one of those. And the two main items that, that I think we should we should be aware, you all should be aware of, one has come to our Public Works Committee as well, and that is 
the state of the roads in the village. Um, this winter has been extremely hard on, on all the roads in, in northern Illinois, um, ours included. And um, this year we're not going to be able to, we're going to be <coughs> primarily just patching. Uh, we're not going to be doing the repair work that, and the rebuilding work that we uh, would like to have done. Um, and we're, we're faced, as, as hard as it is for any of us to even consider that, uh, we have revenue shortfall coming, looming if we're going to try and maintain roads. So uh, I think we need to, to, to put this before the public, let folks know that where, what's going on, why their roads are in the state they're in, and what it's going to take to bring it back to where we expect them to be. So that's one item that's going to be on our committee the whole uh, in, the, in the near future. Another one is, is water and sewer connection fees. Um, and our administrator can elaborate now or at the committee of the whole, but there are, there's some, some considerable issues with um, folks that are within and not within uh, expansion areas in the water uh, system and, and what it costs. Once an SSA has expired 20 years out, then the connection fee is, is a lot less in most cases than the membership in the SSA. So the idea is to try and bring some equity to that which would not mean lowering the SSA costs. They are what they are. It would be full cost pricing of connection fees later on. So that would be a result in an increase in connection fees. We'd have to analyze our, our uh, engineer will have to analyze that and help us identify what, what is a reasonable cost for those, what is a true uh, full cost of extending water mains and sewer. Now that's all I have, thank you. Thank you. And I just want to support what Trustee Jensen has said about the condition of the roads and what we're up against as a municipality, similar to a lot of the other municipalities in this portion of the country. Um, and provision and preservation of streets is one of our core services as a board to the people that put us here. So, you know, we have to do our best to not only keep up with it, but then provide for future repairs and replacement, and that is no small feat financially. So we will be looking at other options to, to address that. Just for the record, we still are doing the, the, uh, the patching. The money that we uh, would have spent with the motor fuel taxes on replacing some roads has uh, been, those projects have been trumped by the need for repair on some of the roads that were damaged over the winter. So that money will be spent uh, making those roads safe but unfortunately we won't be able to redo some of the other roads that we had slated. So we're still doing some of the worst ones, uh, but you're right, we need, <laughs> we need to be able to spend more on the roads to The keep list them. is growing. Yeah, the list is growing. <laughs> yeah, but thank That's you. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, okay, public safety, Trustee Siddig. Thank you, I have a couple of items. Uh, we did uh, finish a public safety committee meeting this evening and a couple of the items on the agenda were some items that we've discussed in, in the past. And one was the universal carding for alcohol, uh, which uh, the committee's recommendation on this item will certainly be coming to the committee of the whole in the near future. Uh, as well as uh, looking at some of the different uh, paraphernalia, smoking paraphernalia that is sold at some of our mini marts, which has been a concern of mine. Uh, along, we talked about the medical cannabis facilities. At this point, I think uh, it's just a dispensary location. Um, not that we have a lot of area to be looking at, but from a public state safety standpoint, uh, from what the committee understands is that the state uh, regulates this pretty tight. And it didn't appear that there would be, if this were to happen, uh, there certainly wouldn't be any um, public safety concerns um, at this point. Uh, lastly was uh, the committee discussed uh, the towing proposals that we had recently received. Uh, the, the committee has asked staff uh, just for a few more items. Uh, we were lacking some information. There were some uh, blanks that were, uh, or some areas that were left blank. And before the committee comes and makes a uh, determination or a recommendation to the board, we're going to await staff's. Um, findings to report back to the committee and that's all I have thank you thank you uh, next is public relations that's my report and just one thing remind everybody where to be 11 a.m. Monday Memorial Day Founders Park rain or shine we're all going to be there <laughs> and looking forward to it I think it's going to be a great event uh, next parks and recreation trustee gust no report your honor tonight okay very good. All right. So that ends uh, uh, trustee reports. Now on to staff reports. There's no village engineer. Uh, treasurer, any report? 
Not tonight. Okay. Village Administrator. John. The, just like to provide the board and the public an update on the, the garbage transition. Uh, the residents of Beach Park have received the mailing from Advanced Disposal in regards to the levels of service uh, that are available for the new garbage contract, uh, as well as the toters have started to being have started being delivered, uh, and ultimately they started yesterday. Uh, a few of them were delivered on on Monday, uh, but we ultimately uh, kind of paused that for a few days. That was resumed yesterday, and it will continue through next Wednesday. Uh, where all of the residents will be getting new garbage and recycling toters, including current advanced customers, uh, so that all of the containers will be brand new and standardized, uh, meaning all the same color uh, uh, and, and identical. And so that will continue for the next week. Yeah, I, know, I got the letter at my house yesterday. Right. And it said right on there, please respond by May 15th. So yes, sir. I was a little troubled by the the late mailing maybe mine was lost somewhere and I'm the only one that got it yesterday no everybody received it yesterday uh, the, there were some some complications with uh, developing the address list for the village of Beach Park as well as as the development of that flyer uh, was done prior to uh, was anticipated that was going to be mailed out about May 5th it was not mailed out of the mailing house in Lombard until the 16th or the 17th so it was mailed after that date uh, but at that point they were already printed and they, de they decided to run them anyway does I haven't seen that yet does that letter include inst instructions uh, with respect to disposal of the uh, the old toters and things all of that will come in a following mailing uh, there's a brochure that was just fi uh, finalized by staff yesterday that will include a more comprehensive uh, uh, explanation as far as levels of service for the garbage it will explain the recycling rules uh, what can be recycled uh, um, it will also get into the household chemical waste uh, prescription drugs uh, landscaping service uh, uh, holidays for the year uh, all of that uh, will be in the brochure that will be mailed out uh, in the next few days and they're, and they're Fridays right and the first yes, pickup will be a the entire village will be picked up on Fridays uh, two weeks from tomorrow is their first pickup is that June 6th yes sir and I just had one question, John. It mentions in the brochure, that I got the mailing yesterday too, just like you did, that there is a senior rate available for people 65 and older, but it doesn't say how to acquire that. You wouldn't qualify for that. I wasn't necessarily talking oh, about me. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, she's talking about her There husband. might be some other people. Her husband. Is <laughs> Don't, the senior residents have been coming into Village Hall, or they can go down to the Ernie Kruger address in, in, in Waukegan for the advanced disposal. Uh, per, primarily, the most of them have been coming into Village Hall, and we've been uh, noting those accounts that are eligible for the senior discount. So there's two options available? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. Anything else? Anybody? Do you have a comment? Okay. How about you, John? Do you have anything else for us? Okay. Thank you. Uh, next item is the village clerk. No report. No report. Uh, as the mayor is not here, there's no report. Um, and now we are at citizens addressing the board. If there's any citizens here who would like to come before us, please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. No report. No report. <laughs> <laughs> you skipped the word. Okay. She's trying to save a few dollars. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> he charges by, by the word. By the word, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, Sorry, go ahead. My name, <clears throat> my name is John Anderson, level 10471, Pickford. I did battle with the so-called advanced company today about yard waste. I no longer will be able to use the cart that Groot has provided for me. Now I have to use smaller 33-gallon facility uh, drums or put them in bags. Furthermore, I have paid Groot my money for the, the season. I bet you that when Groot refunds it, they will prorate the amount for the two months of service I have had from, for them. However, Advance will not prorate the season. They said, well, it's for the season. I said, well, I said, well, I didn't get any service for you from April or May. Well, it's the season. That's that. I think you should be aware of what kind of contract you guys signed for us. I'm, dis I'm disappointed in you guys. Thank you for your comments. John has a comment. John, would you like to respond to any of that? 
I have talked to advanced disposal. It will be prorated uh, as far as what that dollar amount it has not been determined. Uh, most likely it will be approximately $100 for the remainder of this season. Uh, it's somewhere between 90 and, uh, 90 and $105. Those numbers are still being uh, negotiated with advanced now, uh, but they will certainly be prorated uh, for this first year because of the June 1 uh, start of service. I talked about that at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Yes, sir. Okay, anybody else that would like to come forward? Okay. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Gary Glander, husband of Betty Glander. Uh, she apologizes that she couldn't be here tonight. She's in Denver on business. And one of your first things on the agenda was the fence on Liberty Avenue. Oh, sir, could you give us your address, please? 39310 Bowling Avenue. Okay. Uh, we own the house on Liberty, and our daughter lives in that, at that location. Uh, a question was raised at the at the meeting of the zoning board about the neighbor to the east. If we had spoken with him after the meeting, we, we did talk to him. Betty spoke with him, and we asked him if he would come tonight, if he could address the board if, uh, if they had any questions, and he said he would be unable to attend the meeting, but he did write a letter. And uh, I could read that letter into the minutes, or if you'd like, I could read that and leave this letter with the uh, administrator if it would help the, the board in making a decision. The would you like to just give us a summation sure. of what the letter entails? Uh, it's, just, it's just a few paragraphs here that he wrote. Okay. Uh, it's addressed to the village to whom it may concern. It was recently brought to my attention that the neighbor to the west of me at 10737 Liberty wants to replace their stockade fence in the same location it stands today and at the same height. At a public hearing, the question was raised if the fence obstructed my view when backing out of my driveway. The fence has been there for over 25 years and has never caused any issues whatsoever in the sight lines of me backing out onto Liberty Avenue. I have no issues with the location and height of this fence. Sincerely, Harvey H. Holland. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you. That might have saved a phone call, right? Yeah. <laughs> to the neighbor. <laughs> yeah. and I'll, if, if I could, Thank I'll you. leave this with the Oh, absolutely. You'll have it for the record. Certainly. Thank you for sharing that with us. Okay. Who's, who's next? Anybody? Would like to come up? Hi. Um, my name is... Oops. My name is Sue Davern. I'm at 12172 West 29th. And this is regarding the um, Public Works Committee recommendation not to change the proposed boundary of SSA 12. And I, I listen to you and I hear what you're saying, but I'm wondering, and I didn't realize that the Public Works Committee was a public event that I and some of my neighbors could have gone. So I'm asking, is, it, is that committee comprised of our elected officials, trustees, Three of us. and it's Trustee okay. Jensen, Trustee Miller, and myself. Okay, so um, so just the three of you would make the decision to for that additional expense to fall on the 18 people that are you know without the uh, additional three lots. So the three of us, uh, the, the, you know, like bringing in the additional three lots lessens the amount of but assessment for you're, everybody. You're right, and we took that into account, but. If we bring in those three lots, it cancels the whole thing, and we would have to start over. Therefore, the cost, the additional engineering, the additional legal fees, or the additional cost of the public hearing and the mailings and everything else would raise the price. So I believe that savings I, would be counteracted. I can understand that. You'd be mailing again to the 21 yes. lots involved. Yes. Right. And, and as far as engineering expense, I have to question that because the water main is already going in front of those three lots. So I don't know that um, extending the addition of people to pay for the entire project when the water main is already there. So I don't know that that would be additional engineering since the engineering already includes the, the main going in front of their homes. True. The, the, the boundary of the map would have to be redrawn and resubmitted. The boundary of the property. The boundary of it. Right. And, and to include the additional people. Correct. Okay, so that right. part of it. So right. you would yellow in the additional yeah, I, lots? Yeah, I, I don't have the exact dollar amounts that it would cause, but we felt that throwing away everything that we've done to this point and starting over again 
was not cost effective. Okay, and that that's good to know. I wondered who were the the um, the trustees that you know for everybody on my street that we've been in contact with. I was curious who made okay. that decision. Um, that's all on the website too, with the agendas and the. Uh, the, the meeting schedules and everything if it's if something like that's going to be discussed that's all available okay so i'm a newbie at it sorry okay. we had visitors <laughs> um, and, and i asked at the last meet you know two weeks ago i asked do you all get together remember i asked um john you know one of my neighbors um do you all get together and kind of talk about this beforehand and then you sit down and you discuss it and he said no we talk about it at the meeting and i went oh okay well so, at the committee meetings we talk about it and then we the way it was worded is that the public works committee brought to the board a recommendation to leave it as is until after the 60-day period Right, expires. which the 60-day period, and, uh, you know, the attorney talked to me about that 60-day period, which actually does come up June 1st. Like June 2nd June, or something. I, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, which it's is the Sunday. Right after right. the 1st. Right. Right. So that Monday. Right, so right. the following day after the weekend. And mm -hmm. so that on, on that day, at some point, the committee will get together and send out for engineering, and it's pretty much a done deal. Am I right? once the 60 days for no. any once negative they, ex, once the 60 days is done if you turn in a petition then the village staff and the attorney i'm assuming will be going through it going through all the names making sure they are property owners and right. voters on record and everything that you're aware of and then they will be putting together a report saying that it either was or was not sufficient to cancel right the special service area and then i'm assuming at the next board meeting it'll be on or i don't know if it de depending on the schedule of the board meetings you you after the 60-day uh, uh, objection period has expired mm -hmm. then the uh, the village has uh, uh, 60 days from the expiration of that date to either pass the ordinance establishing the special service area number 12 or rejecting it or do nothing and it's automatically rejected okay so it probably wouldn't be the first board meeting maybe the second one after that date for time to get everything together okay and just for the record any of the committee meetings are open to the public I found that out tonight yeah, yeah. and then they're all they're all posted on our website the dates the times and you know we encourage that really I'm sorry okay. you didn't know that yeah yeah I didn't know that and as, um, and, and from the last meeting, I remember, Don, when there was some discussion going on a little bit after I made the presentation, you had said it would be helpful to send letters to everybody on that street who's involved in that, you know. <coughs> and I, I kept thinking, maybe they didn't send me a letter because I did the proposal. Oh, so no. I kind of thought that no. there was going to be some kind of a mailing coming from the village because you remember you had said something like, um, well, if we're thinking of adding additional lots in we should let these people know well what i think i think the discussion my my intent was we'd have to start over again with that mailing that mark just alluded to we'd have to notice everyone of the intention to form ssa 12a or 13 or whatever we'd call it right okay all right thanks all right thank you ma'am anyone else <laughs> know his name Paul Last 9950 West Marguerite Lane in Beach Park. I have to comment on that A-frame business on Sheridan Road. If you think that building is enhancing the village, you need to get your eyes checked. Go look at it, the paint job that's on there. That building should have been condemned a long time ago. It is rotting away as it stands. I don't stands. think anyone said it's enhancing the village. Well, the idea of when I was on the Community Development Commission was to do things to enhance the village make it more attractive and that building is not doing that okay but I mean the, I believe the comment was he he cleaned up a bunch of violations that he had on that property and he's working on well I, a, I sim a simpler paint job would have helped greatly not multicolored like he uh, picked up a can of paint here and a can of paint over there and just slapped it on thank you for your comments Okay, one more call, last call. Anybody? Are you enjoying that chair there? I am. Are you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if there are no more citizens to address the board, then we have no need for an executive session tonight. Any other business? I'd like to offer a motion to adjourn. Okay, I have a motion to adjourn. Second. And a second.
Aye. Trustee Wells. Aye. Trustee Gust. Aye. Trustee Jensen. Aye. Trustee Miller. Aye. Trustee Addison. Aye. And Trustee Siddick. Aye. We are adjourned. See what I mean? Oh, this is oh.